Some new polling suggests the SNC-Lavalin controversy may be turning off some liberal supporters, and Justin Trudeau is taking a personal hit. The CBC's polls analyst Eric Grenier is here with the latest numbers. Hey, Eric. So what, what's happening with the with the polls right now? Well, we're still seeing that the conservatives have that edge over the liberals and that the gap between the two parties might be widening. So let's look at the latest numbers from the poll tracker, which is an aggregation of all the polls that are out there. Right now we have the conservatives at about 37 percent. The liberals are now at 31 percent. The New Democrats at 17. The Greens at 8 percent the Bloc at 4.5, and the People's Party at 2%. So since the story first broke on February 7th, we've seen a big drop for the Liberals. They're down over six points over that time, so that has been a big drop for them. But the Conservatives have actually only picked up about a point or two points. They haven't actually made a huge gain off of this. They were already uh, polling somewhere around 34 35% when the story first came out. Instead, we've seen the New Democrats actually pick up a few points. They're up about three points from where they were at the beginning of February, that was a really low point for them. So this story has given them an opportunity to um, stop the bleeding, maybe regain some of the support that they had lost over the preceding week. So we are seeing a big drop for the Liberals. The Conservatives up a little bit, New Democrats up uh, as well. What about the regional breakdown? That's really what's interesting, because you see a bit of a mixed bag. We'll start out in Western Canada uh, with the numbers there. And you can see in British Columbia, the Conservatives have a lead. We haven't had a big movement in B.C. over the last uh, two months or so. The Liberals down a couple points. We actually have seen the Conservatives make a big gain, about six points in Alberta, but that's not going to gain them many seats. It picks up another seat or two for them at the expense of the Liberals, who have dropped back. And then in the Prairies, we've also seen a pretty big a shift, a, a shift of about 14 points between the Conservatives and the Liberals, uh, which is giving the Conservatives about 48 percent to 23 percent for the Liberals. Now, if we move to central and eastern Canada, uh, this is where you also see that the movement has been a little bit unequal. So in Ontario, the Conservatives have that edge, 37 percent to 34 percent over the Liberals. But actually, the both parties are down about five points from where they were in early February. They're, they're both not really picking up any steam. Uh, the Conservatives haven't been able to cash in, in Ontario at least. Said the New Democrats are up about seven points in Ontario. This is where most of their gains have come from. Quebec, we've also seen quite a bit of movement. The Liberals are down about seven points since early February to 34 percent. And that's gone to everybody else. The Conservatives up two points to 23 percent. The New Democrats up three and the Bloc Québécois up two points to 19. The biggest movement has actually been in Atlantic Canada, because this is somewhere where the Liberals, they of course swept the region in 2015. Uh, they're down about 14 points over the last couple months. The Conservatives up eight. So now we're looking at a close race in Atlantic Canada. There's been a series of polls now that have had the Conservatives ahead in that region. Now, th again, this is a place where the Liberals won 32 of 32 seats. Right now, we're not seeing uh, that it's anything like that, that it is a very competitive race. And if you're looking at where the Conservatives have picked up, it's been in Atlantic Canada, it's been in the West, and where the Liberals have dropped, it's been in Quebec, Atlantic Canada. That Atlantic Paris. Canada, so interesting given that testimony from Jerry Butts during mm -hmm. the, the Justice Committee where he talked about the political calculations yeah. in out east for, for the next election. Anyway, that's, that kind of reminded me of that. Yeah. Uh, what about the seat breakdown? How does that look? Well, right now the Conservatives are knocking on the door of a majority. So let's look at those numbers. They're at 167 seats. You can see it's a wide range right now, but it does overlap uh, with that uh, 170 seats needed for a majority government. This is the best position they've been in since before the last election. They've never gotten this close to the 170 mark, and the Liberals never this low. They're down to 127. And you can see that their range is also quite wide. The New Democrats at 30 uh, right, right now, and the Bloc at 12. If we had to give odds in terms of who would win the election, if there was a, if it was held today, you'd give about three to one odds right now to the Conservatives that they would win uh, more rather than the Liberals. So they're in the best position they've been in, but they still need a bit more to get over that mark, reliably over that 170 seat mark. How much of that do you think, and I know it's so hard to tell, but how much of that at least has changed or been cemented since the SNC-Lavalin? A lot of it, because before this broke, you would have given the same odds to the Liberals, that they would have won in three out of four cases. Uh, so we've seen that movement, and particularly in Quebec, because at that point, um, the Liberals were in a position to win 60, 65 seats in the province. Now they're in a place to win maybe 40 or 45, which is still better than the, it's, or at least a little bit better than the 40 they won in 2015. But because they've actually dropped there, despite the SNC-Lavalin affair playing out a bit differently in the province, uh, that has really whittled away their ability to win a lot of seats. The Conservatives aren't picking up that much in Quebec. They can pick up a couple extra seats. Uh, but it's really been because of the drop for the Liberals in a lot of different places that is just moving them down uh, well below uh, the 170 seats they would need for a majority. All right. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate the update. You can see more of Eric's analysis and methodology online at cbc.ca slash poll tracker.